thank you very much, Tamar, and thank you, Jose Manuel. In some ways, again, as you see, this is an enormously important beginning, if you'd like, of the conversation that we all need to have. Thank you very much, Minister, for joining us. It's a conversation that is going to be based on what happened. It is a conversation that will need an evaluation of whether these interventions were successful and how. But it's also a conversation about different perspectives, different views, and in the same way that uh, the minister remarked on the ILO and the World Bank cooperating, it's a conversation in the global community, including those of you who are watching online and uh, commenting on Twitter and all of that. Let me then move on to the final uh, part of the program, which is a panel discussion exploring both the past and the future. Could I ask the panelists uh, to take their seats um, in here? And I will, while they're doing so, um, introduce the chair um, of the panel. I don't think there's uh, any des designated seating, except uh, Ms. Mukati, you would be here. And then I will hand over. Peter, why don't you come here? And Martin, perhaps, a little there. Um, and while uh, the electronics are being adjusted, um, allow me to introduce uh, and hand over the microphone, uh, figuratively at least, um, to the chair of this panel. We are very fortunate to have a fantastic, distinguished panel from many parts of the intellectual and policy-making spectrum that are going to be important guides to this uh, set of solutions. But the chair today, uh, we're fortunate to have Renosi Mukati. Renosi is the executive director, um, as Jose Manuel mentioned, um, for South Africa, but also representing um, Angola and Nigeria at the World Bank. And Renosi, why don't I hand over to you to introduce the panel and to lead the very interesting discussion to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, and a very warm welcome to um, everybody that's participating in this, uh, um, in this uh, discussion. We've had a very useful um, introduction to the issues that we're going to be discussing with the panel uh, today through the report that uh, uh, Tamara and Jose Manuel have, um, have introduced to us. Let me just indicate how we would like to focus the, the discussion as we, as we continue. We'll look at a number of questions um, that are important uh, as we reflect on how countries dealt with the financial and economic crisis, particularly from a, a jobs point of view. The financial and economic crisis we are recovering from is unfortunately not the last one that we will have. And in, in addition, countries will individually continue to have to deal with the business cycle at different points in the future. So the work that the ILO and World Bank has done um, in collaboration will form, I think, will continue to form a backdrop uh, of any discussions that uh, we, we consider uh, as we uh, go forward. And I think that uh, Jose Manuel was very co correct in saying that uh, the report is in, an important uh, public good, which, uh, in my view, will, in the near future, as well as on an, on, on an ongoing basis, um, help policymakers, uh, help uh, different uh, representatives from, the, from labor and the private sector um, together with governments and civil society in their dialogue at any point when they need to uh, address uh, jobs um, issues. We have, as, uh, uh, we have, we have three, uh, four very important uh, representatives with us, distinguished, a, a very distinguished panel, as has been previously indicated. And through them, we'll have the opportunity to look at um, three questions. The first is how countries responded to the crisis. The second is how the private sector responded. And then finally, whether or not there are lessons in terms of labor market policies and programs that can be used to limit the impacts of employment and earnings uh, in, during future, uh, future downturns. 
Let me move on then to introduce my first uh, discussant. The way that we're going to run this is I will ask each one of them to make an input and then see if uh, they would like to react to each other's comments, following which I will open the floor to the audience for, uh, for questions. Our first speaker is uh, Mrs. Roni Goldberg. She's the Executive Director of the United States Council for International Business. And she's a well-known expert and partner to the business community, trade unions, and international organizations, and has had a very long-standing and extremely productive and constructive relationship with the, uh, with the ILO and the World Bank. Then we will have um, also making an input Mr. Mr. Peter Bagvis, who is the director of the International uh, Trade Union Federation. The ITUC representative, um, he, he's been the ITCU representative in Washington for over a decade, and represents, which represents more than 175 million members worldwide, and I've had an opportunity to be on a panel with him previously uh, looking at IFC safe labor uh, safeguards and standards. What we will um, have through his presentation is um, a, uh, a challenging but also um, uh, discussion. He's a highly respected discussant of other World Bank and international organization uh, panels on issues related to labor markets and employment. The World Bank and IMF held recently their annual consultations with the ITUC, including discussions on our new social protection and labor strategy. Also with us today is uh, Mr. Jürgen Zettler, who is a Director General and, ID, and IDA representative for the World Bank. He is responsible for multilateral and European development cooperation and multilateral institutions, including working with the World Bank, ILO, and OECD. He's a long-standing partner of the World Bank and a well-known economist on issues of international finance architecture and labor policies. And finally, also with us is Mr. Martin Rama, who is the director of the upcoming World Development Report on Jobs that the World Bank is preparing. He has a PhD in economics from the Sorbonne in Paris and, will, and is a well-known labor economics with experience in all parts of the world. And we look forward to hearing more about the WDR um, and his take on the discussion on jobs and the crisis and the new framework that he's developing with his team as part of the work that he's doing. So let me start then with uh, you, Mr. Jürgen uh, Zettler. Despite the crisis, the German economy and the labor market have proven to be fairly resilient and fared well over the past three years. And uh, I would like to know, in your op opinion, what have been the main reasons for Germany's success and how Germans, uh, Germany's uh, experience with labor market uh, policies inform your own dialogue in the bi- and multilateral development co cooperation and what in, the in these times of tight budgets governments can do to protect and promote employment. 